Police procedurals have become the new Western, partially in the sense that they've become a reflection of the times, with good old-fashioned Cold War-era expansionism being replaced with the societal fear that the police will shoot you in the back just for not being white, but more so that there seems to be a new one every five fucking minutes. Some of them are good, most of them are trash, and then there's Den of Thieves, a movie that's significantly better than it has any real reason to be. On paper, Den of Thieves is exactly the kind of film you would expect to be dumped out in January to weekly counter-program against the late halls of the Star Wars and Jumanjis of the world, as well as the award season expansions of various newspaper dramas or whatever the fuck Paul Thomas Anderson's new movie is about, die a quick death in theaters and be shunted out onto Amazon Prime a week or two later. So for such a film to not only not be shit, but also be kind of decent is practically a miracle in and of itself. For starters, it's surprisingly well put together. It has a visual style that isn't repulsive to look at. It has some pretty great helicopter shots and the general camera work isn't shaking like a Polaroid picture or whatever it is you crazy kids are doing nowadays. The action scenes are in focus and aren't cut into a million pieces in the editing bay, and the gunplay is thunderous and satisfying, in spite of the one or two silly occasions where the post-production muzzle flashes are firing in bursts when the guns themselves are shooting full auto. On a narrative front, it becomes more apparent that Den of Thieves has had its fingers in some other folks' pies. It's about 10% drive, 10% bad boys, and 100% heat. And you know that means business because that's 120% right there. But you know what? Who cares? If you're gonna rip off any crime drama, it might as well be heat because heat's fucking awesome. It's abundantly clear throughout Den of Thieves that writer and first-time director Kristen Gudegast is a fan of the classics, but the classics are considered classic in part because they're iconic and recognizable, and as such, they're prime targets for emulation. You might have noticed that I did say crime drama somewhere in that last paragraph, because along with just plain old effort, Den of Thieves features a surprising amount of attention to character. Rather than settling into a mindless bullet storm from start to finish, the movie opens hot and builds methodically to an extended large-scale action sequence at the end. Of course, this structure only draws further valid comparisons to Heat, but with a modern, more marginalized Los Angeles in which the film can plant its feet. Reigning King of Schlock Gerard Butler stars as a crooked county sheriff opposite Pablo Schreiber as the leader of a gang of serial bank robbers and O'Shea Jackson Jr. as the bridge between the two of them. Butler playing an actual character with motivations and range rather than just himself means that it might be by default the best Gerard Butler performance. Jackson follows suit as a constant foil to Butler. The two of them have the only real character arcs to speak of, but that's two more than I was expecting. Schreiber is largely functional and 50 Cent is about as bad as you would imagine, but he mostly just stands around with his arms crossed, which I guess he's pretty good at, all things considered. The middle portion of the film between the opening action scene and the climactic heist is a varying series of interactions between characters operating on either side of the justice system, and the film attempts to blur that line with an unusual seriousness punctuated by a quite effectively dour Cliff Martinez score. But even more unexpected is that Den of Thieves actually has the confidence and conviction to pull off this slow burn style. It helps to gradually inflate the stakes of the film, but also includes obligatory and largely superfluous scenes with Gerard Butler's family that are most of the reason why this motherfucker is two hours and 20 minutes long, but they're also curious in that they seem to be reshoots because the color grading is suddenly blued out despite the rest of the movie being apocalyptic action orange. The heist itself, a lengthy third act blowout, is, as all movie heists are, without exception, littered with convenience, but it's no more than usual. The twist leading in is solid, and the action scene leading out is exceptional, but its well-played conclusion is undermined somewhat by a crappy denouement lifted wholesale from the usual suspects. It could have been easily avoided, too, just by ending the movie about a minute earlier. In fact, the editing is where most of the film's flaws are. Particularly sloppy locational editing at one point sees the same guy explain the same heist to the same other guys twice in two different places. And this is ignoring the 10 to 15 minutes of scenes with Gerard Butler's family that could easily have been removed with no consequence, which is bad on one hand, but the fact that sufficient character development exists outside of these scenes is admirable enough. Den of Thieves is a surprisingly competent movie that I'm more impressed by than infatuated with, but that's what low expectations expectations will do to you, I suppose. It's flawed, surely, but as far as these dime-a-dozen cops and robbers Michael Mann rip-off films go, this is easily one of the best.